welcome to our next session, which is obviously called Be Bold with Tech or Get Left Behind. So I brought two people with me today, um, Olivia and Kevin. Now I learned from Scott that I need to have some sort of an icebreaker, which I didn't have, so we made one up during the break. I actually asked Kevin, um, I saw Kevin about two or three months ago, and I walked straight past him because his hair was very long, he had it in a ponytail, and he actually still doesn't very much look like his picture today. So Kevin, what is the story with the hair? <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I had lost a bet back then when you met me back in, uh, in June, yeah, and uh, I partially won it. Uh, so yeah, it was about uh, be building back the company's profitability over a very short period of time because uh, we were in financial distress two and a half years ago. So uh, we're getting better, slowly healing, and uh, my hair is getting shorter. That's cool. Excellent. So when we yeah. see you next in December, it will be super yeah, short, it's, right? Uh, yeah, it's uh, basically a different uh, tier of bet. Uh, if uh, the company gets cash flow positive, then I'll probably shave my head. Very cool. So uh, Kevin and I actually met three years ago. Um, when I first joined the company, I was actually pitching together with Matt and Richard for Kevin and his business. Because um, so Kevin has been with us really, really from the start. And then Olivia, you also don't look very much like your picture because you just told me secretly it's almost 10 years old, right? This picture. Good. So tell me a bit about yourself. What do you do? Okay, so I'm Olivia Byrne. I'm director of Eccleston Square Hotel. It's a luxury boutique hotel in London, so we're very central, centrally located uh, in Victoria. Uh, I opened the business eight years ago. Uh, it's my family business. So I went to Lausanne Hotel School straight after graduation, literally a week after graduating, I opened the hotel. And uh, we opened as one of London's most high-tech hotels back in 2011. So um, we have Haston's beds from Sweden, which are electronically adjustable with massage feature. Um, back then, we had the iPads. So we were the first hotels with the iPad system and 3D TVs. Um, so yeah, so we were always very tech-minded. And uh, recently, uh, we wanted to kind of continue the tech theme and, and upgrade our, our technology. Nice. So um, what I want to do with the session today is kind of look at where you guys came from, uh, where you are today, and then also share some of your thoughts around what you're going to do in the future. Um, so Kevin, Kevin, maybe start with you. Obviously, when we came to pitch for you three years ago, um, you had this great mindset of where you wanted to go. Do you want to share a bit on where you came from and how you really started your, your journey of change? Yeah, sure. Perhaps I can start by introducing also exactly what we, what we are and what we do. Thanks. So we're a 22 um, hotel company. Uh, we own uh, most of the assets that we uh, uh, run. So we're also an operator. So we're based in Paris. 20 hotels are in Paris. One hotel is in Saint-Tropez and one hotel is in Marrakech in Morocco. Uh, so that's approximately 1,012 rooms, and we're slowly diversifying into the food and beverage industry. Uh, restaurants, bars, cool experiential uh, places, basically. And so, yeah, I uh, was myself a GM of one of our properties that was, uh, like I said, in a very complicated situation uh, four years ago. Very, very tough uh, uh, from a p &L perspective, from, from, from many perspectives, actually. And uh, I arrived at uh, yeah, the position I'm in today, sales, and it's, we're a family-owned company. I forgot to say that, so my title is very long. But I basically, uh, I'm in charge of sales, marketing, and uh, IT. I came with some of my teams here today. And so two and a half years ago, when I arrived at HQ, I started just basically auditing uh, the company situation from a tech perspective and from a customer experience perspective. And we were Opera users, huh? the uh, unfamous PMS. Those um, who shall not be named, right? <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, they, they, they know it. And it's definitely, extremely, definitely. we've been extremely clear with them. Um, they were supposed to deliver a cloud-based uh, PMS since um, uh, they got acquired by Oracle, they were, they were supposed to actually release this new, uh, this new PMS that actually never got released. They're still trying, trying it out at, uh, at Disneyland or somewhere. Uh, it's not, yeah, well, you're a Disney, uh, but the Parisian version of that. Uh, and so, yeah, it was just um, complicated for us to try and see how we could get to that vision that um, I, I, I exposed to, to my board after a, a four month period of, of, of audit. Um, without changing the PMS, it was very complicated. So we basically drew, I drew like a, a customer journey line where we identified eight touch points and we wanted the technology to uh, allow us to interact with our customers uh, all throughout these eight touch points. And we were not able to um, deliver uh, one of our promises without switching our PMS. So we started to apply on this customer journey vision, a customer centric new ecosystem that we built uh, with the my IT manager that's here, Terik, and uh, so we decided to start, like, to switch PMS and uh, met Richard back then, back in 2016, when you guys were a much smaller company, uh, only 15 
employees or so. Um, and, and I realized that uh, what was very important was the mindsets and also the, just the promise to be just agile and be able to, to, to be interfaced with other solutions. Very important for us in order to, again, interact with our customers all throughout the journey. So you kind of mapped out your entire customer journey and then you realized, I really can't do anything without changing. We call it sometimes like the, the, the heart of an operation, right? So it's the beating heart of your, of your hotels, is in your case, your PMS. And I think Olivier Few was the same, right? Where you where you came from. What struggles were you facing when you decided to change? So we were I was banging my head against the wall with Opera. Honestly, the customer service was terrible. Um, I was paying my t my managers high salaries to basically just talk to Opera constantly over the phone. Uh, no customer service, very hard to integrate uh, with partners, and we wanted to be forward thinking, and we you know, wanted to integrate with great startups, but Opera didn't allow us this because it cost you know, 2,000 pounds every time we wanted to integrate, um, and took three months. So it, wasn't, it just didn't allow us to, to go forward fast enough. Um, yeah, so those are the biggest challenges that we had. So you, you kind of reviewed your tech stack and then obviously you, I think both of you started um, by changing your PMS. Kevin, I know that you brought all of your suppliers into a room uh, and you kind of like drew out this whole landscape of what you wanted to see and see whether we could actually be compatible, etc. Can you tell us a bit more about the story on, on where you came from and basically what, your, what does it look like today? So basically on top of the, um, of the customer journey um, audit that uh, I, I, we did uh, as a team uh, two and a half years ago, the idea was very simple. Huh? As an a independent hotel chain, it was first of all, representing sales first of all, was to um, uh, change our sales strategy. Huh? Just like everyone around this, in this room, especially back in 2017, the idea was to you know, push direct sales, be a little less OTA dependent, reduce the cost of sale, obviously, by selling direct, trying to estimate also how much it costs to sell direct, because everyone's talking about direct sales, but how much does it cost you? So that was important. In order to do that, we needed to rebrand ourselves, just a little detail, but we went from a very generic name called Les Hôtels de Paris, which means Hotels of Paris. <laughs> Not very uh, <laughs> original, uh, to Machefer Group, because we wanted to push the family side of things and everything. And then uh, in order to do both of these um, objectives and to meet these objectives, we, we needed the right tools and to switch uh, to uh, a, new, a, new, a new IT ecosystem. And again, like you said, uh, the PMS was Still is uh, for sure the heart the, the, the heart of the of um, of the hospi tech um, ecosystem that we imagined. So we called it uh, the MHC uh, cloud solution back then when we actually invited all the different um, uh, MHC cloud uh, system stands for Mashfer Hotel Collection uh, uh, cloud system. We basically just put a name on all the different solutions that we picked, and we wanted them to talk to each other. And by talking to each other, it meant basically having the right APIs well connected and in order for the data flow to be just to follow our, our, our promises so we, we, we wanted uh, uh, we wanted the right um, customer data to be you know like to come from the from the, the PMS get sent to the CRM for the customer to actually also get the data that we send them afterwards uh, sorry to, to, to send them the message that we want based on the data that we have uh, so it sounds simple like that but when you imagine around having around the table a PMS solution provider um, a channel manager uh, a POS Worked with light. We, we are working with Lightspeed now. Uh, intelligent uh, key solutions. You know, like we, we had Sesame in this room. We didn't have Onity, yet we're working with them today. Uh, BI solutions, um, television solutions. Because back then it was super cool to have intelligent content on the TV. Um, yeah, all these uh, solution providers were, were 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 in that room that day, and we almost want, wanted them to sign a chart that we uh, came up with. Um, and the idea was amazing. It, Turned out it was a little bit more complicated. This is something that everyone has to realize. It is tough to change uh, the, the, the solutions that you currently work with, but it's so worth it. Um, so yeah, that's, the, that's initially how we launched our um, IT ecosystem change. And, and yeah, you guys were the, the, first, that, the first guys that, you guys were basically the, the solution where we had the least hesitations basically, because we knew we needed to change our PMS. Then the rest, it was you know, just challenging different solution providers and picking the most, uh, the, the ones that are the, with the best mindsets and the cheapest ones all, obviously, also. Yeah, and I think, I think one thing that, uh, do you want to comment? Sorry, I go ahead. I just wanted yeah. to add that for us, having a cloud system was so important because we had Opera that was only, you could only access the data in-house. So, for example, if I was traveling and I didn't know how many rooms I was selling, I had to call reception and then they would tell me um, how, how my, what our occupancy was. 
And for us, like, we're a small hotel, we're only 39 rooms, so it's very expensive to employ our own sales team, revenue manager, PR, so my strategy is to outsource as much as possible, so I, I find the best um, revenue manager and PR out there th that have a lot more knowledge that can not work for me full time. But thanks to Muse, they can access all the data remotely, and they don't have to be in-house all the time, which for me was such a huge value. Yeah, and I think also if you review your tech stack, right? I, I mean, we just recently launched Marketplace, right? Which is, if you guys don't know, it's like an app store, right? It's, it's kind of similar to what you have on your iPhone, um, whereby you can go into the commander and see, right, you specifically said, for example, revenue manager, so you still have a person that looks at that. But if you don't, right, you can try and work with any of the revenue management partners that we have. What I personally like very much, and this comes back to flexibility, is you don't have to stick with one partner if you don't like it, right? If you feel that having a person works better for you, or if one company doesn't work, but the other one does, it actually allows you to switch like within a month, yeah, for example, from one great, to the like, other. And it's for example, with revenue management, you can switch on atomize and pace at the same time and really see how it works for your property uh, without having to sign a contract and get into, you know, a very stringent terms and conditions. So you can really test out what works for you. Yeah, and I think that's actually that's something that I find, especially for both of you, actually, that works really, really well. Um, now, obviously, we talked about successes, but I, it's, I think it's also good to talk maybe a bit about failures, right, or things that are harder. Um, what you told me, actually, is, and I know, because I've done a lot of implementations, and implementation is painful, right? It's like open heart surgery. You remove the beating heart of an operation, and you put in a new heart. It's never easy, and yes, it will be painful for a little bit, but can you maybe share some of your... I would almost say return on investment, right? Where do you see how Muse has benefited you either from my direct bookings or uh, automation or people or anything else? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for us, definitely efficiencies. Uh, before I was employing people that only had opera experience, so my pool of candidates was very small, whereas now I can be very open and, and employ people that really love hospitality and they can learn Muse very quickly, so I, for example, I use a lot of interns as well from Lausanne Hotel School. We send them U Muse University before they start, so they already have a knowledge of the PMS, so my team are not spending months and months training them on, on the system. So for us, that's been a huge uh, advantage. And also, I want to say the distributor, the, the booking engine, has been a huge success for us. Uh, we've seen a big amount of direct business coming through through the system. Also, it's non-commissionable. We sure. used we used Synexus before, and it was again very much like Opera, very clunky. Uh, we couldn't change the content, whereas now with Muse we can change very easily. So we have more more control on the booking engine. So yeah. So for you, it's really been employees, and it's been increase of bookings. Um, for you, Kevin. Question is success first and failures afterwards. Sure, right? go for okay. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, and, and, and it's, it's a perfect question. I mean, we're here to talk about Muse, obviously, and, and um, uh, it's been successful on many levels, and I'm not here saying this is to promote uh, the PMS. It genuinely uh, was a success on, on many levels. I think the first one, and it's very important to, 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 to remind of that, is that um, our hoteliers, the ones that are um, at the front desk, uh, are loving it. I was giving you the example last time, Yves, of a of um, an assistant GM that, because uh, just FYI, we switched to two Muse property back, back in 2017, and we switched our entire company to Muse Systems uh, this year, uh, basically in April. So it took a, a year and a half uh, because we were the first also mid-sized uh, chain to, 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 to get on board. Yeah, so it took a bit time. Us, it, was, it was very painful back then, and it, it, it's no, it no longer is today with the amount of progress you guys have, have done. But basically, this GM was on a Muse property back in 2017, and he was promoted to a GM position on an Opera property. And the guy hated it, hated us, because um, <laughs> he was like, it's a nightmare. It's, uh, I forgot how tough it is for my teams as well as for myself to run the hotel uh, with uh, Opera being installed on it. So first of all, success uh, to answer your question. From an HR perspective and from um, front desk SOPs, it's so, it's so much easier. I mean, you can, like for your, for your check-ins, it's, it's just like using an iPad, you know, you don't have to explain to a to, uh, to uh, a grown a grown up uh, how to use an iPad. They know how to use it. Same, same goes for Muse. Um, second, um, in terms of admin, you know, admin stuff, uh, a lot has been changed with the payments also, you know, the accounting department has, uh, uh, really does appreciate uh, getting uh, payments in batches through, we're using Muse Merchant. You guys probably know it's, it's uh, Stripe in the back end, but uh, it's much, much more time. I mean, again, it was painful to switch, you know, uh, from our, the previous version of, of, of we call it in French TPE, you know, like the payment terminals, 
to, uh, to, uh, to using news merchants. But I still but remember, uh, like 30 of your hotels actually bring all of their batches of yeah, yeah, invoices, etc. Yeah, to the your accounts every day. It's, it's a nightmare, yeah. absolutely. And last, uh, last, last uh, success, I guess, that we can actually measure in terms of KPI is uh, direct sales. Uh, it's not only thanks to the to the PMS, but it is uh, very heavily uh, linked to that. We went from nine percent of direct sales on our websites, uh, through our websites, um, uh, website. Um, uh, bookings to 14%, so that's five points. Um, very, uh, very hard now huh, to to increase uh, this direct uh, booking shares, and uh, that is also uh, thanks to us having changed our PMS and our booking engine, the uh, news distributor uh, that is linked to your PMS. So yeah, uh, that's three levels of, of success um, that that we can genuinely. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how about your failures, right? So what, what are some of the things that you've maybe tried that didn't actually work out that well? Um, so, so many failures also, <laughs> not really. From 2017 until now, so many. I think there's, um, uh, there's no one to blame, or just the idea here is not to point fingers at, at, at no one, but it's been very tough for sometimes you as a, t as a solution provider to really understand the vision that we had. The French accounting system also, uh, the French uh, legal uh, uh, aspect of things that, that you got, it took you it took you time. It took us time to really explain uh, explain that. That's why we also uh, um, onboarded uh, just two properties first to try and uh, do damage control and then roll out the rest of the plan. Um, another failure is also interfaces, huh? like uh, having uh, all these different solution providers in, in one room is amazing, but having them really talk, really have the data flow that works well. Uh, the biggest failure is the CRM uh, as uh, we speak. So I launched th this three-year program two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And so we're on track for many things, but not for the CRM. We're not collecting data um, from our customers, valuable data from our customers the way we want. Muse is doing a great job, but you guys are a PMS. You're not a CRM per se. You're not an uh, experience um, solution provider uh, or customer experience solution provider at least. So it's tough. It's tough to, to, to collect data in a subtle way, not to get the customer annoyed. We tried to make them download apps. They don't download the apps. We tried to make uh, them go on web apps. They don't go on web apps. Uh, we tried to make them feel their, their preferences in really nice fields, you know, in order to surprise them uh, ahead of their first day with nice little touches because we know their preferences. Uh, they don't care. Uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't work yet. No, it doesn't work yet. So we, we, we have not uh, succeeded yet. And um, so, yeah. If and it's actually could, uh, funny because how we, uh, sometimes I'm used, we, we try and say, um, uh, you know, let us do the work for you, and obviously you guys can focus on what you do best, which is being a hotelier. And actually, I think in the example that you're giving where it's backfired, is you still focus on the CRM, you're trying to have people fill in things manually, you try to have your front desk agents fill out like a long questionnaire on how can we surprise you, they just want to go to their room. So, so thanks for sharing that actually, because uh, that's, that's one of the questions here. What to develop the CRM, you're more yeah. than welcome also. <laughs> It's actually a question here. What was the worst decision you've made in terms of tech investment over the years? Is that is that your example? Would, would uh, so that be the question? The, what was the worst decision you've made oh. in terms of tech investment over the year? Um, <laughs> Opera, he says. Yeah, Opera was, no, Opera was amazing back in 2006, which just happened to be in 2019. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's a bit more complicated. But uh, this, the CRM has been one of yeah. the tough uh, yeah. investment in, in, in time and in, yeah. you know actual people in energy, you know, um, without cash per se. Do you have any failure stories that you can share? Or things that you may want the audience to watch out for, to be mindful of when you do like a changeover? I think definitely for us still getting data that's usable. Um, like we tried to use Power BI and we were promised that we would be able to customize the reports and we're still not be being able to do that. So that's a bit frustrating for us because we want to get a bit more information of how the, uh, you know, where our business is coming from. Um, and I think definitely one thing to bear in mind is, is the switch over. Um, Muse tend to tell you it's very easy. Um, it, it it's not bad, <laughs> but it is a switch over. It is taking your heart out of the hotel. So I think definitely having very tech-minded staff that have the right culture um, and you're there to really explain to them why you're changing a PMS, because for them it's a huge heart attack <laughs> situation. Um, so for us, I think when we did the switch over, we, we should have spent a bit more time on extracting the data from Opera, although it was very difficult for us, um, and reviewing the data and making sure it's all clean and tidy. So we kind of did it a bit last minute. It was a bit of a rush. Um, so yeah, I would say that's one thing to bear in mind. Challenging. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. 
Hey, and if we focus a bit on like guest experience, um, so Kevin, you and I have done a session in Paris not so long time ago for the Direct Booking Summit on loyalty, right? And I'm, I'm sure you guys feel the same here, but the the whole um, the whole session was, you know, if people think about loyalty, they often think about points and redemption and 20 hours discount, and I've stayed so many nights at your properties, hence I get a free night, which really works well if you're Hilton or Marriott, but it doesn't work very well if you're uh, like at one hotel or two hotels, or even, Kevin, in your case, you're 22 hotels, Olivia, you're, you're one hotel, right? So that doesn't necessarily work. How, how has maybe tech helped you in not necessarily loyalty in, in the traditional sense, but more in the customer focus or creating customer experience kind of sense? Okay, so I'm going to try and answer your question very concretely, uh, the way it works with, with, with Muse, because there's many ways, and there's, uh, we have a bit of a far-fetched approach when it comes to that, because it's linked to the CRM, and we have not succeeded yet on that aspect. Um, but um, the concrete example that uh, I want to give is basically that we um, Muse just allows you to have little codes that you can just give. Uh, we happen to put these uh, little codes on our business cards, uh, and we just hand these business cards, uh, like the receptionists are being basically trained to try and give it as, many, uh, as much as possible. And there's a discount rate on it. Um, very classic, but uh, it's, you guys do it in a very efficient way. So for now, it, it's uh, in terms of customer loyalty, not reward yet, because they're not there yet. But uh, we get that stickiness thanks to uh, the code generation. And uh, we do it in a very uh, basic way, but it just happens to work. So I, I, I don't want to, to, to give a, a, a complex uh, answer uh, to that yet, because um, because for now, the, the thing that worked happens to be a code. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so, so yeah, uh, but we're working on actually trying to capture uh, the, uh, the, the, the customer's involvement with our brand. This is what we talked about last time, uh, because there's a real difference between customer loyalty and customer, like a reward program and a loyalty program. And we just want to have loyal members more than uh, customers that are rewarded with points, like you said. And uh, so we're trying to really um, rethink uh, a loyalty program. So that will involve having a powerful CRM. And basically, the, the more the customer interacts with us as a brand, the more they'll get um, rewarded. But uh, we're thinking of tokens. We're thinking of many, many things. We just want it to be very subtle, again, and very um, done in a very elegant way, not a, a tech uh, blurry way, you know? Yeah, and Olivia, obviously, um, name me a few of like the, the, the marketplace integration, or actually any of the integrations that you use in your hotel, where you feel that you provide a better guest experience because of these apps. Yeah, I mean, for us, we're in central London, it's super competitive, so what we want to make sure is that whoever comes onto our website books and doesn't book another hotel or another OTA. So I completely agree with using the voucher codes. For us, it's been very helpful. So we use different voucher codes for different channels. So for example, for MetaSearch, we use one voucher code, so then we can track where the bookings are coming from. Um, and then using the marketplace, so we, so I constantly go on the marketplace to see what's out there. Um, I try and inform myself as much as possible about the companies. Um, we just, uh, started working a couple months ago with Quick Text, so they're a chat bot that we put on our, on our website. Um, and we've seen that that's been really great for us because it's answered a lot of very simple questions that normally the guests would send an email. By the time the staff get back to them, it's like, you know, it's too late. <laughs> so uh, Quick Text has been great with that, and it's also integrated with our um, booking engine. So it means that when you go on the, on the chat, you can book directly as well. Um, so that's been fantastic. We use uh, Oki as well, um, so for pre-arrival. Um, so that's really been great for upselling. Uh, and then at the moment we use Atomize for revenue management. Yes. And that's been brilliant because London, you have to be really on top of it. You can even change your rates three times a day. A human can't do that. Uh, we still have our revenue manager, Thibault, who oversees everything for us. So it's still important to have a revenue manager, but I think if you want to be really hot and, and also look at you know, a year ahead, um, on a personal level, manually you can't do it. Exactly. You know? And I like your quick text example, actually. So I, I stayed at a hotel not too long time ago, and um, I wanted to know if there was a gym, right? And I went to the hotel's website, and couldn't for the life of me couldn't find it, right? It wasn't written in the descriptions, it wasn't written on there. I mean, our biggest question is, do you have parking? Right, <laughs> exactly, right? And just yeah. a simple, and I was too lazy to pick up the phone and actually call the hotel, so I just, I just ignored it, right? And I got frustrated even before I started. So just having a, a simple chatbot, in this case, or a WhatsApp, right, would really, really help yeah, me as a consumer. Yeah, we just started WhatsApp now. We actually had our first room service order through WhatsApp last week, so it's nice. been quite exciting. Do you have your menu on WhatsApp, or um, how does that Maybe work? it's something yeah. we're, we're, we're doing, but we actually have a QR code on our key wallet so that you can 
if you want, you can just uh, scan it and you can chat with us. Nice. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's been interesting, and nice. I think more and more people like to to converse through WhatsApp or definitely, Facebook. Definitely, definitely. And I think what I would challenge, I guess, people here to do right is when we talk about that guest loyalty and that guest. Um, those guest experiences, right, is use those integrations. I mean, one of the great things of having an open platform is having exactly that, the freedom to do whatever you deem appropriate for your hotel to create those guest experiences. And every hotel is different. You know, a central London hotel can be very different to a country exactly. hotel. Yeah. So it's, but it's having those options and not just having to work with one partner. And what's really exciting for me is I work with startups as well. So, you know, they're really keen to get my ideas. So I'm part of their journey as well. Uh, so we feel like we're an entrepreneurial Definitely, hotel rather yeah. than just static. But and you are right because I think you've been named one of the top. Was it top twenty-five tech companies? Oh, te not tech companies. Hotels. Tech <laughs> hotel tech savvy companies, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I'm just mindful of the time. So there's two questions that I still have for you before we maybe go through the questions here. Um, so we talked a bit about where you came from, obviously, uh, what you find challenging, where you guys are today. If you like look into the future, Kevin, where do you see? like tech helping you in the coming, I don't know, one to two years? Um, so yeah, our, our biggest challenge, so we, we, we function in three year programs um, for the past two and a half years. So for, for during our last three year program, the big challenge was to change entirely the IT ecosystem. We, we've, we've, like I said, we're almost on track. Um, uh, the idea is to finish it really 100% uh, with, uh, with the CRM topic uh, being closed once and for all. Um, and in three years time, the idea is really to start, uh, now that it's all deployed, uh, now that uh, we're gonna have a full year from 2020 onwards of you know new PMS, um, new booking engine, channel manager that works perfectly behind, the accounting interface that's perfectly done, POS, the list is quite long. Uh, the idea is to really start exploring it full, uh, full steam. Uh, so um, the idea is to try and connect other solutions that for us were, it was way too soon you know, to, to consider it, uh, knowing that we were Again, not in the financial position where we could just pick the, the, the sexiest solutions out there. Uh, I think that um, also you guys as hoteliers were all in the same boat, right? The, the idea is now to differentiate what's gimmicky from what's actually needed. Um, and we've all, I guess myself at least, we've come back from, uh, from this 2016, 2017 period of time where it was, it was all about, you know, like embrace technology, embrace technology, change, change, change. Do it, but do it in a smart way. Um, for us, it's going to be about customer retention, doing what we're supposed to do best. Now that uh, the technology is all implemented in our hotels, now that we also live in a world, at least in Paris, where Airbnb is sitting right about, like right under us, and ho big hotel chains are right over us, we have a very thin layer of value uh, added that we can bring to customers. So, and this, and for me, it's all about service. It's the only way we can differentiate ourselves from a, a cool Airbnb uh, apartment uh, or or a nice. A room in a, in a cool hotel chain that in God knows how much they invest into reinventing themselves within the uh, AHD, uh, Core, Marriott, OYO. Um, so I, I, I think that we'll have to uh, leverage technology in order to, to do that, uh, meaning just being closer to our customers, really recognize them, know what, what, they, what they like, so getting their preferences collected also. Uh, and, and yeah, I think we can see that in many industries also. And kind of like, okay, technology, no problem, I can use it. But I don't want to be intrusive. It it shouldn't be a challenge. It that's going to be, be smooth, you yeah. know exactly. We're not going to be for the next ten coming years. Again, we have to be very very agile. Look at what's coming in the market, but not switch entirely over and over again. Uh, otherwise, we'll just forget what we're supposed to do, which is like. Yeah, but I love how you how you revealed your, your reevaluate your tech stack to service your guests better. Really, that's that's really what it comes down to, because that's yeah. probably the only way that you can differentiate yourself between all these other hotels that you have. Yeah. yeah. So it goes through training. To answer your question, we'll have to really train staff and and go back to probably what uh, other hotels company were doing 20 years ago. Fine, we're, I don't mind doing what uh, Couture did 20 years ago, if that means really having strong uh, values Im implemented in the company and really getting to, to recognize our customers and, and, and serve them in the perfect way. And let technology what it does best on the side, you know? So Oliver, what would it be for you? And like, if you could maybe just tag on to that, what tip would you give the audience? Like if it was one thing that they could take away from today, what would it be? I think for me, it's don't settle for legacy uh, companies like Opera, <laughs> you know, really, really think ahead. And you know, what's so exciting for us now is that small independent hotels like us have access the, to these amazing technology platforms without having to invest a huge amount of money in developing a, a new system. So, you know, why not take the jump and try? Yes, it, you might fail. It might be difficult. Uh, it's difficult to change the mindset of your team. 
but nowadays you have to be forward thinking. There's so many hotels opening, there's so many brands, there's so many chains. If you want to compete with Booking.com, uh, Hilton, all of this stuff, you, I mean, we can't compete because we're small, but if you want to differentiate, you have to use uh, you know, technology. Technology that enables you to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So we have uh, two and a half minutes left for some questions. I'm just going to have a look at the board. Uh, what is your biggest challenge with Muse? Olivia, do you want to, since you have the mic, do you want to take that one? <laughs> I mean, recently it's been accounting. Uh, we had a few issues there, so we just didn't have enough um, under, well, just understanding from Muse of how to 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 operate the. Um, yeah, we had a, an issue with accounting, so that was a bit of an issue. Um, it's, it's actually interesting you should say that. Let me let me let me just maybe explain that from our point of view. Yeah. So we we equally find that accounting is really hard. It is. Right when we I mean, started, every is that's the thing, right? Every country is so different. Kevin, if I look at France, right, I think um, accounting in fr in France is especially challenging. Yeah. And even for us now, I mean, we are. I started three years ago, and we just hired a product manager, especially just for accounting, which is a it's a part of our system, right? It's not yeah. the core, but it's a part. We hired somebody specifically to deal with these issues because yeah. it also became apparent to us this is super important. You can't you can't just you know you can't just ignore it. Yeah. Hence, we also need to invest from our point of view just to help you guys with these things. What's your biggest challenge then, Kevin? Honestly, uh, don't tell me it's accounting. Yeah. What's that? Don't tell me it's accounting. Uh, no, no, it no longer is. No longer is. No, no. Um, <laughs> Way bigger challenges than that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Now uh, most of the pain points have really been erased, uh, so it's amazing. Um, biggest challenge is, I, I guess, globally. Just to, to, to answer your question globally first, is uh, following up with. Uh, you guys are moving at such a fast pace now. It's cool, huh? it really is cool, especially in, in our industry, we're not, we're really not used to that. Uh, so you guys are a bit like wizards, that you're trying new things and you're testing like a trial and error. It's amazing, we just, it's, it's a bit tough to follow, at least for Definitely. a medium-sized company like ours. I don't have someone. Hey, also as an employee, it's hard to follow sometimes. Yeah, there you go, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we share the challenge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But again, that's amazing. It's more of a, of a, it's a the approach is amazing. The mindset is amazing. So. Nothing to change on that. And then I guess you, you guys have to be slightly better, but I can understand it's not your forte yet. It's the booking engine. You, you have a really cool one. Conversion is really good. You guys are conversion oriented. And that you're doing it well. And then in terms of features, you have to develop it a little bit. The rest is, is, is working well. Um, Power BI is, is a challenge, but we've, um, it's also been a challenge for us. But we're in the process of really fine tuning the last sense that don't uh, interface well with Muse. Um, and the rest of the, Marketplace apps, I mean the apps that are in the marketplace, we've tested them and some of them are really cool and the, and the integration is, is seamless, you know, it's, it's easy. So, cool. yeah, I would say following up with you and uh, booking engine. Cool, thanks so much. So actually we are right on time, I see now. We're actually, the, the clock is counting upwards, that's not good, I think. Um, thank you both actually for being so, so open and so candid, also sharing your failures and the things that maybe don't work so well with me. So uh, I hope um, everybody found it helpful. Um, thanks so much for your time. Cool.